This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Join us each week for Everyday Tech on MPB Think Radio. We have an IT expert, a computer repair ace, and we troubleshoot your problems on the phones as well. Everyday Tech, Wednesdays at 10 on MPB Think Radio. Download the podcast now or listen on YouTube on the MPB Think Radio channel. From MPB Think Radio, this is AutoCorrect, helping you correct your auto problems. Our host is Coach Charlie Melton, ASC Certified Master Technician. I'm Jermaine Flood. Hey, Coach Charlie, I'm back. Well, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good after my little uh, mini vacay. That's what I'm talking about. (laughs) It don't take long to get rejuvenated. No, you just need like four to five days of sleeping in, and you will be rocking and ready to go. You know, if I could sleep four or five days in, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be who I am. You, <laughs> you move you move a I lot. I just don't sleep much. You do a lot, coach. That's right. You do a lot. That is so right. I enjoyed myself. I loved the show last week. Uh Jay White definitely stepped in and and you and him sounded so great together. So just thank you all for just filling in for that day I was out. Well, we're glad to have you back. That stay vacation did you good. I know it. I feel good. I feel good. I'm drinking coffee. I'm a little warm, but I'm feeling good. Good, but <laughs> today we're talking about maximizing fuel economy. And in summer months, during the time that everybody wants to vacation, this is the perfect time to figure out how we can do that. So our email address for questions is auto at mpbonline.org. Okay, I've got a definition. Of course, I came back with one. That's right. Improving fuel economy refers to the attempt to achieve a better fuel economy through a variety of means in a vehicle in an attempt to save money and reduce emissions. That sounds good. What would you think would be the average fuel economy of today's cars? If I had to average it? Coach, I'd say 18 city, 24 highway. I'm saying, yeah, 20s. I feel good with that 20 something. So if you get a average, highway, if, uh. you, if you get an average of 23 miles a gallon, that is good fuel economy. But there are more that have 30, 40, and even, even up to 50. If you go to hybrids, you can get up to 50 or 60. But according to what the fuel economy is of that vehicle, it's according to how you maintain that vehicle and how you drive that vehicle. Yeah. So there's a lot of variables of how much fuel economy you're going to get out of a car. You know, I'm really interested in, I I know how much you can take care of a vehicle to maximize fuel economy, but driving one, that's something, that's something new that I I wish I could do. I guess people have been doing it before on how you can kind of um, find different techniques of driving to save fuel. Well, you know, if you start thinking about driving, if you're going to drive safely, there are ways that you can drive. But if you want to drive where you're not so safe and you're putting others at risk, right. yeah, there's ways to get better fuel economy. But it's dangerous. Yeah. Like you showed me one where the, the hyper milling, yeah. hyper milling. You can't do that because what you're doing, you're taking a draft just like you're a NASCAR. You're drafting behind a vehicle, and all the wind resistance is hitting that vehicle, and there's no wind resistance hitting you, Mm -hmm. and you're right on the tail of that vehicle. Mm -hmm. Well, when that vehicle throws its its brakes on for some unknown reason, well, now you're going to run into the back of it. A lot of people you see doing it on 18-wheelers. Okay, car, yeah. cars get right behind those 18 wheelers. That's scary. Well, they can't see you. If you're behind them, they cannot see you. Right. And they put their brakes on, you go right under that vehicle. I mean, how much are you saving really catching somebody's draft? Well, really, what costs you a lot of money is the wind resistance. Okay. That, and if you notice how they made cars now, they're so aerodynamic that the wind just sort of flows over them. Mm-hmm. They used to be box cars, mm-hmm. and they look like a box, and the wind would touch them and push off. Here, the wind goes over them, so that aerodynamics gives you the that extra, fuel economy. Extra I was fuel. thinking like Jermaine. I mean, at 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, how much are you really? I mean, like stock cars are going like 160, 180, 200. I mean, I could... I see what you're saving there, but at yeah. 40 and 50, you're still saving a bunch of... A bunch you're, of every five miles over 60 miles uh, an hour, you're saving about 14%. Ooh. So the best driving speed is 55 to 60, because everything over 60, you're losing about 14% gas mileage. Wow. And you ain't shaving off enough time to make a difference. You're not shaving off enough time to make a difference. <laughs> you trying to do math on me in here? Uh-uh. Nope, not my math. Sound like it. Not my math. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> not my uh, math. Well, Coach, I want to learn more about maximizing fuel economy. We're going to go to the phones first. We have got John in Clarksdale on the line. John, you're on with Coach Charlie. John, hey, how y'all doing today? Doing good, John. John, hey, uh, Coach, I've got a question for you. All right, so my son's truck, the uh, F-150 King Ranch, it's a 2016. He got rear-ended in the school parking lot, and it's like it started making this weird noise. And I took it to this uh, one shop, and they said, Two intake manifold bolts are broke, and that's where the noise is coming from. It's like, all right, well, what's that going to cost? They said, well, we've got to pull the whole cab off the truck, and so it's going to be about $4,000. I was like, okay, so that's $2,000 a bolt. That just doesn't really add up, you know, for me. And so I'm like, is there any other fix that you know of for that model truck? And it does have the EcoBoost engine, which is probably the you know, the, the problem with it. Is it a diesel or gas? Gas. Okay, so it's a, either a V6 that has an EcoBoost V6 in there. Most likely that's what it got, the V6 or the V8. Yeah. Okay, either one. It's a 6 with a, would be a yeah, so it's a V6. There's really, first of all, you do not have to pull the cab in order to get that uh, intake off. That intake comes off the top of it. Matter of fact, I'm fixing to work on one this weekend uh, to pull the intake off of a V6. Uh, there is you have a upper intake and a lower intake, and most likely, if it was the intake, uh, if the bolts are broken off the in- intake and it's making noise, your truck would be running like crap. And the reason why it'd be sucking air. Okay, is it running bad? It does. When it's cold and you first crank it, it'll make that noise, and it does. It's like a sucking sound. Now, let me ask you a question. You know, 30, 60 seconds, it clears up. Let me ask you a question. Did he say the exhaust manifold or the intake manifold? Because I've never seen Uh, a boat break off the intake manifold because they're straight down, and a boat's just not going to break off. There's no way for it to break off. Now, the exhaust manifold, they could rust. And somebody could have got in there before and broke the boats off with the exhaust manifold, and it will make a sucking noise, and it will even make a tapping noise when it's cold. When it warms up a little bit, that tapping uh-huh. noise will go away. So you might yeah. want to ask them yeah, which that's one that's it good. is. That's yeah, maybe it's just okay. a little confusion. I think well, it sounds more like a exhaust manifold. Well, if it's an exhaust manifold, is it like... Uh, like imperative that it get fixed like immediately or is it going to do long-term damage or what? Nah, people ride around with exhaust manifolds uh, leaking all the time. All it is is going to make noise right there until it gets warm and then the noise will go away. It sounds like a valve tapping, but then it'll just go away once it gets warm because the metal contracts and expands. <clears throat> it's not going to damage yeah. the vehicle itself. You know, you just need to get it corrected sooner or later. All right. John, does that help you? But would they have to pull? It does, but one more question. All right, so do, to fix the exhaust manifold, both, would they have to pull the whole cab to do that too? Or I don't think so. I don't think so. They should be able to take the manifold off okay. and get in there with something and pull those studs out. All right. John, well, we thank you so much for calling Coach Charlie today. We're going to stay on the phone lines. We've got Bob in Hattiesburg. He has an AC question. Bob, you're on with Coach Charlie. All right. Thanks for uh, have, taking my call. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I have a split question. Uh, your relays on your uh, – that control everything on your auto truck. Yes, sir. Are they all uh, held in uh, working order by a fuse or not? Most every relay, if it's an air conditioner relay or a light relay, they all have a fuse as well. So the fuse is what's getting the power to it, okay? Yeah. And the relay is what is switching it from one place to another. All right. Uh, there's no way to check a relay, is it? How, how do you get them out of the circuit? And those relays, you can test the relay itself. You can take. You won't be able to test it while it's in the vehicle yeah. unless you have a relay tester. And it's yeah. a kit that you could buy, and you would stick it into the relay hole and then stick the old relay in there. 
but yeah. you can test the relay itself. Uh, they have uh, different numbers on them, like 87, 30, and 85, and uh, 86 is yeah. your numbers on the, uh, if you look at the relay. And yeah. you'll take a multimeter, and you're going to test for a continuity between certain circuits on that relay. Yeah. Are these relays, uh, I, I find they're hard to pull out. Do you, can you snap them out like you would a fuse? Uh, you can, and sometimes you just got to be real careful. I don't know if it's the little relay you're talking about or the big, uh, the, the big, big one, the big square one that has five prongs. It will pull straight out. Now there are a couple of relays that are uh, in the fuse panel that you cannot pull, but it's not an air conditioner yeah. relay or a fuel pump relay. It's you can pull all those out. All right, this is my uh, main question. Uh, I got a. Ford F-150 uh, 2014, and uh, one time they had to change the main computer system. He had under underneath the, uh, it's mounted on the chassis, and I had some problems with it starting. But anyway, they, they changed that. Now, this is what I'm, main question. Uh, my air conditioning has been working real good the whole time, and even with this uh, computer thing went out under the truck, it still worked. But this is what happened to me. I checked every fuse in the owner's manual. It rely, relates to the air condition. It's usually saying climate control or blower. And I checked every fuse that's connected like that. There's nothing that just says air condition, but I checked all those associated fuses. But the air condition was working all day one day. And I shut it off when I shut my engine off and come in the next morning when I uh, cranked the truck the air conditioned blower or nothing would work no air conditioning indicator being working or not but what, the, what could cause it to just go out overnight like that so the blower is not working either right no no blower the air conditioning you turn it on and and uh, you power up your air conditioning and, and like defroster <laughs> heat or anything the blower will not come on but all the lights on the dash that's indicating what's working in your blower, air conditioning, all, they all turn green like it's going to work, but no blower action, no air conditioning. It will not uh, blow okay. a heater. Okay, well, you need to check there. Go to your blower motor itself. Check There is a blower motor fuse and a blower motor fu uh, relay in that system. Yeah. It, it'll say blower motor. You want to check yeah. that fuse and that relay. I uh, checked them. Okay. Yeah. All them fuses, I checked about six or seven fuses related to the, what we're speaking of. Right. And I, every fuse was good. Okay, so the next thing I would do is on the right side where that blower motor is, get in there and check those wires because Ford had a problem with the wire uh, burning at the connector. And just oh, make yeah? sure. Yeah, so you want to check that out. All right. All right. That's on the side, that's on the side panel. Right, it's right underneath the uh, right side under the glove box. Passenger. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. All right, Bob. I hope that works out. Bob, is he's checked everything, Coach. He's working on that car. Bob, if you get that working, give us a call back, okay? We'd love to hear what results that you got out of that AC issue because it's hot. It it's is hot, hot. And we need air. That's right. And I need air. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we see you, Nick. Hold on one second, because I want to know about the safety going with the flow on a four-lane highway. If you've got a question, send your emails to auto at mpbonline.org. We're talking about maximizing fuel economy. Is your car under recall? I'll tell you how you can find out next. You're listening to AutoCorrect with Coach Charlie Melton. I'm Jermaine Flood. If you want even more AutoCorrect, Find our podcast on all podcast platforms for your smart device. AutoCorrect is heard on MPB Think Radio Thursdays at 10 a.m. with a replay Saturdays at 11 a.m. Here's a couple of um, quick recalls. Mercedes-Benz Mercedes is recalling 143,000 vehicles over fuel pumps. Um, the issue concerns the fuel pump impeller, which may become deformed and come into contact with the fuel pump housing. As a result, the vehicle may lose propulsion unexpectedly, increasing the risk of a crash and injury. And with, <clears throat> excuse me, 143,000 um, uh, Mercedes-Benz cars, there is a lot on this list. Um, but as a remedy, dealers will replace the fuel pump for free, and they will begin notifying owners the 25th. But make sure you call, call the dealership if you need um, any questions about that. 
also go you'll go online to this website to get um, to see if your car is underneath that recall. Also, Honda Acura is recalling 124,000 vehicles over brake issues. Um, this includes a lot of the Civic sedans, Passport SUVs, Pilot SUVs, um, Ridgeline pickup trucks. Um, but these are all basically 2020 to 2023 um, models. Uh, this includes affected vehicles from Acura and Honda's luxury arm. And the issue is with the tie rod fastener that connects the brake booster and brake master cylinder. And due to an error in assembly, the fastener may be loose or missing the tie rod nuts, potentially causing the brake master cylinder to separate from the booster assembly. And of course, this could result in a loss of brake function, increasing the risk of a crash. Um, dealers will inspect and repair the brake assembly as necessary for free. They will begin notifying owners August the 7th. If you want more information about these and all other recalls, you can go to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's website, nhtsa.gov forward slash recalls, and inputting your VIN number. Coach, they're just trying to find a really pleasant way to say that the brakes literally were falling off. They're really saying is that the bolts that hold the master cylinder to the booster was not connected correctly. Oh, okay. And well, some of that language she used made it sound like the brakes were just falling off the car. No, that's that the, seemed less than optimal. Yeah, it's the brake booster and the brake master cylinder. Oh. <laughs> I hope they're not just falling off the car. No. Oh goodness gracious! But if you need more information, make sure you go out there. We're talking about maximizing fuel economy, and we're also taking your vehicle repair questions. Our email address is auto at mpbonline.org. We are on the line right now with Nick out of Kibby. Nick, you are on with Coach Charlie. Coach Charlie, I think my question has already been answered, but I have a question that has to do with safety versus uh, fuel economy. If you're out there on the highway, on a four-lane highway going from town to town, you're going to be running with people that are running 75 to 80 miles an hour. And you're not getting good fuel mileage. If I ran, say, 65 or 70, I am a peasant out there on the highway. So make a comment about that. Yeah, you know, I was just talking to Jermaine about that. If you're, you have to go with the flow of the traffic, mm. regardless where you're at, okay? Because once again, like you say, if you're, if traffic's going 70 and 75 miles an hour and you're going 50 or 55 miles an hour, you're slowing traffic down. Everybody that's behind you is slowing down or they're running up on you and could cause a potential accident. So you really need to go with the flow. And, you know, it says that the, there, if you look at the uh, speed limit signs, there is a minimum but you try to stay away from that minimum because, like I say, you're causing a lot of uh, secondary damage that could be done to a lot of different people if you are out there going 30, 40 miles an hour. If you're going slow right. is what you're saying. Right. Okay. So make sure you stay at the minimum or a little bit higher than you, you want to try to stay a little higher than a minimum because traffic's, you know, the flow of the traffic, you know, if you go to Texas or somewhere like that, speed limit 75 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. And how quick can a person going 75 miles an hour come up to a vehicle that is going 40? 40. Right. So you got to think about that. And uh, that's a good uh, comment about the safety. You may not be getting fuel economy, but you're going to be safe as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nick, did that help? Did you like that answer? <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that was a good answer. The only thing that bothers me is if you've got a, if you've got a highway out there that's marked 80 miles an hour, which some are out in the western state, people are going to drive. 90 miles an hour. Right. You don't always drive 10 miles over the speed limit, you know? That's usually it. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess just stay with the flow for fuel economy purposes. Well, the, well, that's really for safety is staying with the flow. Fuel economy, you're going to slow down. Yeah, yeah. And I can get what Nick is saying. So let's just say I go to Atlanta. Atlanta, of course, their highways, people are literally doing 80 to 90. Right on the highway and for me that's quite a bit fast so i i don't know if i'll be able to stay in the flow well then just stay with the speed limit if it's 65 i mean if it's 70 miles an hour stay at 70 miles an hour but stay slow vehicles are to the right fast vehicles are to the left you always remember that yeah yeah nick thank you so much for bringing that up we we're having a real conversation about that that's right <laughs> We are having a real conversation about that fuel economy. Um, we're going to stay on the phone lines. Let's go to Susie. She's in Fairhope. Susie, you are on with Coach Charlie. 
Hi, thank you so much for taking my call. Yes, ma'am. Uh, on two occasions in the last two weeks, I have a 2003 Acura. Uh, I've gotten in the car late, later in the evening when it's very hot, leaving work, and my air conditioner has not come on. No blower, no, no, nothing. And within about five minutes, it started working. I called a mechanic, and he said he can't deal with it until it's broken. He can't fix something that isn't broken. So, help. Well, if you think about that, he is, that is the truth. If it's not broken when he gets it, he's going to have to try to mimic the problem. But if he can't mimic the problem, he's going to give it back to you and say, well, there's nothing wrong with it. What I would do, it sounds like maybe the ignition switch itself, like the relay itself, when you cut the key on, it sends power to that relay for the air conditioner. If that relay is sticking and it decides to, you know, maybe you hit a bump or maybe it gets uh, moved around a little bit, that relay will unstick and it will start working. What I would do is check the AC relay in there. Okay, AC relay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I don't, I mean, obviously someone mentioned compressor, and I looked that up, and that's a fortune, so I'd rather not have that. But if the compre- if it's working fine when it starts working, you know, the compressors just don't decide to start working and then go off. You know, either they're going to work or I they're see. not going to work. I see. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, I'm sorry, you said the relay? Yeah, you look for your clutch relay on front of the compressor. There's a, it's it's in the fuse panel. It's called a clutch relay or an oh, AC don't relay. Don't I don't know how to open the hood. No, so. okay. Well, it's in the fuse panel. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too, Susie. I don't know how to open the hood. <laughs> this is why mechanics have to have mechanic places. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, okay, so. No, go ahead. So I shouldn't worry, worry about it, but I do have to have someone look at it. Right. You'd have to have somebody look at it because what it sounds like to me is that something's sticking and it's getting unstuck by either being jarred a little bit with a car, hitting a bump or whatever, and then it comes on. So I would have that relay checked. And if it's the blower motor not coming on, then I'd have that blower motor checked as well. And they'll know what they're doing once they look at it. Okay. Oh, I sure appreciate your help. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Susie, thank you so much. Coach, you always are figuring out how to help somebody. Well, that's my job. And then you have a bone to pick with how somebody didn't help you. Well, you know, (laughs) I always like to call people out and tell them if they're doing wrong. I'm not going to mention the place. We're going to say a big box store. Yeah. We'll say a big box store. I went in there. I had a tire put on my car. It was just a single tire. I took the tire off, took it in there. I said, could you put a tire on? They said, sure. Okay, it cost me $78. But when people put tires on, new tires on rims, they put a thing called a valve stem in the rim Mm -hmm. okay that's just another thing to keep from leaking okay so i got my invoice and it said the tire it said the valve stem and i told the people when i went out there to pay for it i said tell you what if you didn't put a valve stem in my car i'm gonna make you get my money back Mm. okay well i walked out there they didn't know who they was dealing with they did not put a valve stem in that car (laughs) and that guy told me on my tire that guy says oh i'll put one in there i said no no you're not going to break my tire back down i said i want my money back i said but this is the problem People do not know what a valve stem is. A lot of ladies, a lot of young men, uh, or people do not know what a valve stem is, and you have it charged on the invoice. That's $12 a vehicle. And if you're not going to do it, you shouldn't charge people for it. That's the, the bottom line. Here's the thing, though. They don't know about a valve stem, but they're working on your tires. Well, I'm talking about the consumer doesn't know what a valve stem is. It almost sounds like somebody else didn't know what a valve stem was. Well, they just didn't want to put it in. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. They Maybe just didn't want it. to put it in because it costs it cost money. I ain't going to call them out. <laughs> no. But I would say for all consumers, hey, check those invoices and make sure they do what you tell them that you want done to your vehicle. And mm-hmm. if it's not done, make sure you ask somebody about it because, like say, they were just going to let me walk out and pay that extra three dollars and the inf- come up. Yeah, inflation. You know, just imagine right. how much money this company could make off that three dollars. Three dollars and be twelve dollars a car. Right. You know. Right. But right. then I did want to give a shout out to a person that did help me. Okay. You know, we had a caller last night. Listen, Coach needs help too. Everybody, he is a guru, but he does need help with his vehicle. Well, last <laughs> last week, me and Jay had a caller that talked about the brakes on their twenty three Honda. 
Okay, well, my wife has been complaining about the, her 23 Honda, so I took it back. It's under warranty. So I took it back uh, a couple months ago. Oh, they said nothing's wrong with it. They looked at it. I said, okay, wait a minute. So I went in to get their oil changed this time, and I said something about those brakes. Well, Tom, the service manager, said, tell you what I'll do. I want, since you know about your car, I'm going to take your car and have a technician put it on the rack. We're going to pull the rear wheels. We're going to pull the brakes and let you come back there and inspect them. Yeah. <laughs> so I went back there and inspect them, looked at the re- looked at the rotors, looked at the brakes. Everything was good. Yeah. And he put it back together. Okay. The whole thing is he was nice enough to let me go back there, mm-hmm. check and make sure that the work was being done properly mm-hmm. and that the parts there was nothing wrong with them. Mm-hmm. You know, if you find a dealer or you find a, t- a shop that will let you do that, hey, you got a good shop. I'll be looking, but it's, I'll be looking at geometry. But I'll be looking. But you got to know, <laughs> you got to know what you're ta- looking at. Right. That's the whole thing. <laughs> Know what you're looking at. <laughs> That's right. Call Coach. Now, <laughs> our email address where you can send questions is auto at mpbonline.org. We're talking about maximizing fuel economy between your car repair questions. What's in the news? Leaving a child unattended in a hot, hot car has already cost one Mississippi life this summer. And I'll tell you more next. Thank you for listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. Coach Charlie Melton, retired instructor from Clinton High School's Automotive Technology Program, is our expert host. I'm Jermaine Flood. Hopefully you've downloaded our app for your smartphone, because I got it, the MPB Public Media app. In addition to listening to the show on the app, you can click the support button and make a contribution. Contributions help keep our programs on the air for you and others to enjoy and we thank you for your contribution and listening to Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Autocorrect is heard on MPB Think Radio Thursdays at 10 a.m. with a replay Saturdays at 11 a.m. Um, you already know it's summertime so leaving a child unattended in a hot car has already cost one Mississippi life this summer um, and make sure that you are checking for that a child in the car or a pet in the car. They are recommending that we do not leave children or pets in the car in a vehicle regardless of how how quickly a store run could be, and uh, it's just a bad idea. The temperatures in a car can rise 10 to 15 degrees in 10 minutes, which I felt. I mean, you can literally not get out of your car, go inside, and then walk back out in five and it not be just steaming hot in there. And that's extremely dangerous for small children and animals. So if you see a child left unattended in a car, holler, call law, local law enforcement, report the incident, um, and the heat indexes have topped. 110 degrees in the Jackson area last week and are expected to be above 100 this week. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to that. Well, the good thing about that now, when you take the key out on these newer vehicles, it has a light and says, check the rear, make sure. You yeah, don't Jay have was kids talking yet. about there's a sound. Yeah, there's some people make sound, some cars make sound, but they, they have uh, ways now that uh, reminds you, but I just don't see how you can uh, forget a child in a car regardless or a pet. Uh, Right. You put it in there. You're not that busy. I know it's hot, but please remember what you did before you started driving. That's right. Please do. Please do. We're going to go to the phone lines. I want to go to Tim in Columbia. Um, Tim's got a follow-up call from a show about insurance that we had done already in the past, and he's got a fuel mileage comment. Tim, (laughs) you're on with Coach Charlie. Yes, I was listening to your show a few weeks ago, and you're talking about the insurance. And my wife and I were, we got a, a Ford Explorer with a moon and sunroof and glass, and they are talking about hail, and I told them, don't worry, we got full coverage. And then I listened to uh, your Saturday repeat show and got thinking about, I wonder if it's covered. So I called my insurance company, and we have three vehicles, all with commercial insurance, and uh, found out I had the lower minimum rate, so I doubled all my rates, and the uh, premium went from 310 to $305 a month. That's pretty cool. So it went down after you doubled it, and that's true. That's good. <laughs> yeah. And... and uh, and then I, I got a broken windshield in my Explorer. It just, just happened last week, and that's a $500 deductible. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, talking about mileage, we got one of my our three vehicles is a, a 2018 Nissan Sentra. 
a gas and a four cylinder. Right. And uh, I'm real, real uh, conscious about my driving. I drive with my gas pedal, looking ahead all the time. Brake lights come on. There's red lights coming up. I'll, I'll let up on the gas and glide. And uh, right now, driving that vehicle right now, I'm at 46.1 miles per gallon. Ooh, Ooh, that's great. You're, you're, doing, you're doing predictive driving. That, that's one of the uh, things that you can do to save that fuel is doing predictive driving. Look for what's ahead and mm-hmm. where you can stop and what people are doing in front of you. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I do that all the yeah, time. Thanks. Car, <laughs> yeah, this car is supposed to get 37, so we're almost almost 10 miles better. What kind so, of car is it again, Tim? What kind of vehicle? It's a 2018 uh, Nissan Sentra. You making it work. Yeah, those things, uh, like I say, if you drive defensively and you drive, you know, stop stop accelerating real hard, you know, and stop braking real hard, those those people don't understand that does save you money. Mm-hmm. You know, and as you're driving down the road, you know, weaving in and out of traffic, that costs you money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this has that, was a CVT transmission, I forget what they call that. Yeah, the CVT. Yeah, if, if you take off slowly, it doesn't act like it's shifting gears. It just goes to mm-hmm. 2,000 RPM and just stays there. And, mm-hmm. You know, like, like when you get up to speed, it drops. That's pretty nice. Uh, I, I have no complaints about it. That's but great. My question, my question is, you, your mileage get better if you run the windows down or with the air conditioner on? Well, that's another hmm. myth that people have. They say, well, hmm. your air conditioner is using uh, power from the vehicle. Well, yes, it is. Well, if you're running around town, you're going less than 50 miles an hour and you're just cruising around town, you're going to get good gas mileage if you have your windows open. But if you're on the highway and you're going 70 miles an hour, the wind resistance of all that wind coming in and dragging on the car, you're not really saving anything. Mm-hmm. So I'd cut the air conditioner on. Cut it on. Cut well, the air, Cut it on. <laughs> time to reach down and cut her on right now, then. Oh, that's, do that's it, it, Tim. That's what I need to do. Do okay. it, Tim. Get out that heat, honey. <laughs> hey, sounds good. <laughs> Tim, thank yeah, you okay, so well, much. Yeah, yeah, I, I I appreciate your show. I usually listen to you on Saturdays, and uh, y'all have a blessed day. Okay? You too, okay, Tim. thank you. Stay cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, We're going to stay on the phone lines. I want to go to Alan and Raymond. He has a comment about going with the flow. Alan, you're on with Coach Charlie. Oh, hi. Uh, thank you. I love the show, like he says, and I, I learned a lot. But I was wondering, I, I go to New York a lot. But doing 55, 60, but you kind of mentioned something like going to Texas and saying this is slow. Is it, uh, yeah, is Texas. You know what I mean? Or, I mean, overnight, you don't see too many vehicles. Right. Let's well, say Texas, you're going 75 miles an hour. That's the speed limit out in I Texas. <laughs> I'm going to New York. It's about the highest is 70. Yeah, in Texas, it's 75. If you go out a little bit further out west, it's, it's 80. 80. Yeah, it's 80. Yeah. So you got 80. to, if you're going 60 miles an hour, that car, that vehicle behind you is going to come upon you pretty dang quick. But guess what? We have vehicles now that have radar uh, cruise controls, oh, yeah. and if you get close to a vehicle, because I know my car does this, it will start slowing the vehicle down. So you do not run in the back of that vehicle. What? If you have it on cruise oh, and... You're going 75 miles an hour, and that vehicle in front of you is going 65. It's going to slow you down. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, I, I don't. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I don't want to set my car too much, it, but uh, it actually tells you uh, accident coming up. It does. <laughs> oh, okay. Look at y'all with these smart cars. <laughs> That's those smart cars oh, for uh, you. <laughs> okay, I have one quick thing. Um, coming here on my last trip, the car started slowing down. And then after uh, stopping at a rest stop, and then once you get off, then then the climate control, a big a big symbol with uh, growing hot temperature gauge. So I pulled over to the side when I got a chance. Uh, I didn't see steam, but according to the manual, the car kind of saved the engine by slowing down the engine. Doesn't let you push as much as you wanted to. It's called limp mode. Matter of fact, it cuts the air on some vehicles. It cuts the air conditioner off. It cuts uh, a lot of things off that would produce heat, and it would slow the vehicle down and put you into a thing called limp mode, hmm. where you can't decelerate as fast. Mm. That's like power saver uh-huh. mode on your cell phone. That's what it is. Power <laughs> saver mode. <laughs> so, oh. 
Before I put the defroster on hide, that didn't hurt it. Nah, you know, a lot of times what we used to do if a vehicle was running hot, we'd cut the air, we'd cut the heater on, and when the heater came on, it would let some of that hot air go across, and it would uh, cool the engine down. Oh, uh, okay. So that's, <laughs> I did that one time years ago. So, yeah, uh, so that's really what it's doing when you cut the other stuff on as well. All right. Well, Alan, did that any of that help? Oh no, I yeah, yeah yes it did. I just uh, maybe. <laughs> To fly. <laughs> <laughs> of course. That's what I do, Alan. Just, hey, it's just be safe, though. <laughs> yeah. Alan, thank you so much for your phone call. I see you, Kendricks. I see you, Curtis. Stay right there. We're discussing maximizing fuel economy and taking your repair questions. You can send us an email to auto at mpbonline.org. We've got a new car review from Casey Williams coming up and Coach's Tip of the Week. This is AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. A couple of weeks ago, we tested the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk, and at $72,000, it's a very nice vehicle. I think if that seems a little pricey to you, we might have a better alternative this week. It's a 2023 Jeep Compass Trailhawk. The Compass is a little bit smaller, but it has all of the same sinister exterior look of the Grand Cherokee. It's got the Trailhawk logo here on the hood, which I think is really cool, the red tow hooks, and the 17-inch black alloy wheels with off-road tires. Inside's been upgraded for 2023 with a larger touchscreen. You got wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, Alpine audio system, and wireless phone charging. And of course, all the latest crash avoidance systems. But underneath the hood, it's still a very capable vehicle. This has a crawl ratio for off-roading, and power comes from a two liter turbocharged four cylinder, delivering 200 horsepower, 221 pound-feet of torque, and still giving you 24 miles per gallon in the city, 32 on the highway. So how about that smaller price? Well, the compass starts at $28,400, this one all in, $46,290. This is AutoCorrect. If you missed any of our program, you can listen to the whole show from autocorrect.mpbonline.org. AutoCorrect is heard on MPB Think Radio Thursdays at 10 a.m. with a replay Saturdays at 11 a.m. Stay tuned after the show at 11 a.m. at Southern Remedy Kids and Teens. I'm Jermaine Flood, and our expert is Coach Charlie Melton, ASC Certified Master Technician, and Jay has a amazing fact that he just told us. Jay, tell everybody. <laughs> oh, so you were talking about the places when those speed limits out west, and that got me thinking about it. And so in 2015, Montana passed a daytime and nighttime 80-mile-an-hour speed limit. And up to that point, from 1999 to 2015, Montana at night was the last unregulated place, with, uh, or last place you could drive with an unregulated speed limit. Mm. Well, that's the place to go if you want to drive. Right. right? <laughs> right. No, it, you can drive until the car doesn't that's move right, any faster. Until it doesn't go faster. Until it doesn't break, go faster. You could, yeah, you could break the, the speed of sound. Oh, that's and, right. And no one would know. <laughs> Nobody would know. And let me tell you about your gas. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> It's gone. We're going to go to the phones. We've got Kendricks on the line in Greenville. Kendricks, you are on with Coach Charlie. Hi, guys. How you doing? Hello? Yes, how you doing? Good. I, I just want to say I enjoy your show. I got a question about my uh, 2013 Lexus uh, ES350. I have a little rattling sound uh, near the steering column, and it's like only when I hit a bump. I've had um, repair shops look at struts, uh, all the linkage up front. They say everything is tight. The steering is fine. Just trying to find out what that sound could possibly be. Okay, it's right on the steering column real quick. Just let me answer. Maybe this will help you. It has a cradle. That engine sits down in a cradle. And you want to just check and make sure either the rack and pinion that is right coming across there, it has mount two mounting bolts on it. Now, those do come loose, and that will cause you a problem. You can hear it when you hit a bump, or maybe a bolt in the cradle itself right under the subframe is loose. Is that something I can look at myself, or do, uh, do you suggest that I... Uh, well, you'd, have to have it, you'd have to have it on a rack to look at it, up in the air to look okay. at it. Okay. Uh, all right. Appreciate it, Coach, and thanks again, you guys. Kendricks, thank, thank you so much for giving us a call. We're going to stay on the phone lines. We've got Curtis on the line. Curtis, you're on with Coach Charlie. Hello. Hey, Hello. Curtis. Hey, I got a, a um, 2010 F-150, and the air is not blowing cool when I'm idling or if I'm going from stop sign to stop sign, but if I'm on the highway, it's blowing cool perfectly. Okay, what well, um, that's 
What that sounds, I'm just going to give you a quick answer. What that sounds like to me is that the condenser itself right in front of the vehicle, in front of the uh, radiator, may be obstructed because usually what happens if the fan is turning and it has air coming through there, if it gets hot, it will not work. It will start getting warm, but then when you start taking off again, as air starts flowing through there, it will take and work again. Okay, so is that the... Is that the evaporator? No, that'd be the, the condenser on the hood, under the hood, right beside the radiator, right in front of the okay. radiator. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Curtis. We're going to stay on the line. We've got Ed and Ponta Talk. I think I said that right, right? Ponta Talk. Ponta Talk. I, I just said too many, too many <laughs> letters I put in there. Ed, you're on with Coach Charlie. <laughs> Hello. I have a uh, O2 Nissan Frontier. It's got the 3.3 liter engine and it's a four wheel drive. Yes, the sir. ABS, the ABS light comes on and it's sporadic. It'll, it'll come on. It's always off when I when I start up and start driving. After a little while, it comes on. Sometimes it go back off. The last time I had some work done, uh, their diagnostic tool said something about a, a longitudinal sensor. But they weren't completely sure that was the problem. I'm just asking if that's something that I could replace or where it's located for sure on this truck. Well, it's like a gyro in those vehicles. A lot of the newer vehicles have those gyros. I don't know if this one in particular has it, but usually if it's a wheel speed sensor, if it comes on and goes off going down the straight road, what I would do is look at a sensor, maybe a wire is nicked and it's touching uh, the frame or it's just barely holding on because that's what it sounds like. It doesn't sound like a gyro because that would come on all the time if it wasn't working. And that latitude, what that does, say if you're in four-wheel drive and you're making a hard left and the vehicle's leaning a little bit to the left or right, that's when that light comes on. But the ABS is traction control itself, and it runs off those speed sensors. Mm-hmm. Now, I've done a little research on that, and it seems like it's located in under the console. Is that- right. It is located on the side, uh, probably towards the, by the steering wheel. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. <clears throat> All okay. right. All right, Ed. Thank you so much for your phone call. We're going to stay on the line. One last caller. We've got Aaron in Memphis. Aaron, you're on with Coach Charlie. We've got about a minute left, Aaron. Hey there. How you guys doing? Doing good. What you got? What's your question? Uh, the car I drive for work, the car that they gave um, I'll go as fast as I can. Um, I would usually just handle it for myself or my own vehicle, but I can in policy. So here's the thing. Uh, the car will start. However, I have to hold the key for 45 seconds, sometimes as much as a minute before it will start, or I can pump the gas and it'll start right up. Now here's the thing. As a work car, there's only two places I can take it, and they want two weeks of work. You can even get to it. Now, my concern is that sometimes it does this, sometimes it doesn't. I was going to ask, is there anything I can do to make sure that when they finally get to it in two weeks that it actually struggles to start and it won't have sat there for two weeks for nothing? Well, what it sounds like to me is that your fuel pump's going out on it because usually that's what happens. If you have to hold that key and you're turning over and over and over, that fuel pump usually goes out like that. So that's what I would have them check. All right. The fuel pump? Yes, sir. All so right. check for pressure, I guess? Or uh, yeah, check you're checking for, for uh, check for pressure. All right. Thank right. you, guys. Thanks, yeah, Aaron. Thank you. thank you so much. Coach, what's your tip of the week? Well, the, co- the tip of the week, since we're talking about maximizing fuel, make sure that you maintain those tires. Make sure you do good maintenance on the tires, on the air filter, and drive according to the speed limit, you know, and use your cruise control as much as possible so you drive steady. Okay. Cruise control, drive steady. Stay with the flow of traffic. Don't start darting in and out trying to get up to the front of the traffic like me. 
Just and that'll save you some gas. Because you're not getting no. Hey, now one one quick thing, real quick. If you're going on a trip, make sure you check ahead where the gas stations are. Because if you go from one state to another, gas taxes may be higher. That means this fuel is going to be higher. So you want to check that out. Okay, make sure you do that. That'll save you some dollars there too. That'll wrap us up for today's AutoCorrect. Our crew engineer Jay White, call screener Abram Nanny. For Coach Charlie Melton, master technician, I'm Jermaine Flood. Episode and podcast producer. Thanks for listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen